Music is a mysterious language. More beautiful when you don't understand the meaning of it. Very often it's so beautiful for what it is. The sounds without meaning seem to touch our hearts or our souls. More about the mood that it creates in us, regardless if we're supposed to understand that or not. And when we have a dictator performer, a dictator teacher, a dictator publisher, a dictator um, perhaps musicologist who then tell us what is the right way to think outside of our own, which might be temptingly wrong to them, but meaningful to us. And I find it very liberating when you play a famous piece to people who don't know it and you become the vector of the piece because people identify you to the piece, so you have this responsibility to make it loved to by them, not by trying to please them, but being earnest by what it meant to you. Regardless if in the moment of transmission there are too many details to be comprehended and the filter takes time to be reheard, and perhaps at the end of the performance they go, I'd like to hear that again. And if they hear it by somebody else, they'll say, I don't like it by that person, I liked it better with the person I discovered it. The first time is magic. Sometimes the industrial quantity of music we listen to as a background, as an accompaniment of images in video games, films, of commercials, anything, is to the psychological level of the storytelling. It becomes deeper, meaningful, but it's still the story that we follow. There is no story to follow in a piece that is not a song. There is no lyrics. It's our imagination. And so, of course, you have the context, the knowledge, the studies, and the teachers who bring you to understand how to think it, how to hear it, how to like it. But you already do. And perhaps for the wrong reasons, as well as you might hate it for the wrong reasons. Or you might pass next to it without even noticing this masterpiece. Because you're not ready to apprehend this foreign language, which sounds at best intriguing, if not incomprehensible. And it takes several times to like some pieces of art because they are more complex than uh, some pre-chewed, um, more popular music, which is meant more like an industrial quantity um, nourishment for our souls and uh, imaginations. And um, kids are very um, quick to... Um, judge because they also observe the adults do it like parents who say don't do what I do do what I say but uh, the role models for children are the adults regardless not only the parents obviously and how many classical music uh, adults are the role models for children in general education schools I don't speak of music schools because it's already funneled. By that time, they're already prepared to expect something. I speak about people who are there to receive science, grammar, for a language, for a knowledge, for a position, for a job, for, a, for all these things for which society formats us um, and for which we lose a little bit of thinking outside of the box, being creative, uh, daydreaming, like they say, don't be a child, stop dreaming, um, be adult and do what is the right thing because you have to earn your living. True, I agree. But this portion of the daydreaming should remain on the side of the main progression. And after all, not all people who go to schooling become writers because they learn grammar for their language or another language. They just want to be able to comprehend it. So if they read a book, they don't need somebody to lecture it for them. They can read it by themselves in their bubble, uh, between the author and themselves in the imagination it triggers to them. Once it's pointed out by a film director in an adaptation of the book and choices are made by the writers to emphasize this and not emphasize other things, and having known the book, you're disappointed. You say, I didn't treat what I like the most in the book. In fact, you want to be your own piece. And you don't need somebody to tell you the piece. And in music, unfortunately, since you cannot always read the music by the score itself, the encoded notation is silent, mysterious to those who are scholars to study it, and uh, the teachers to transmit it, and the publishers to uh, supposedly get closer to the original. 
because there isn't really a notation that allows to detail the uh, facts. In fact, it remains as detailed as possible, blurry, and perhaps in that blurry area there is room for interpretation, uh, literally translation in the sense of interpretation, as a translation. That's why I started um, these thoughts uh, with the fact that music is a mysterious language. Uh, and sometimes you hear it for the sound of the words rather than for the meaning. You go to see an opera if you do. They give you a synopsis before in the program if you read it. So you know roughly what's going on. But how it's going on is the, is the style, the genre, the expectation, which in fact makes you lose the, the, um, the flow of the following of the plot developing. And so all of a sudden um, you hear people scream or people um, uh, cry or, you know, whatever in the opera. The enhancement of the word to bring it to the meaning is a, its own art form, which is an exaggeration inevitably. Just like in every pop music, there is also a genre style where you say the words in different ways or you change the accentuation of the words or you 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 swing them in a different rhythm and um, there is a purpose for the popular music of course as well as uh, the classical music they don't uh, reach or they don't aim for the same um, portion of our intellect or our um, sensitivity but I think that we cannot approach uh, unless we have a translator, since we cannot read ourselves. Imagine a silent hall with people reading the score and enjoying it while being together, but silently for themselves. So they don't have to say, I don't like the way this person thinks of the piece. I like it my way. And so we can then share it uh, by saying, what a great piece, but my way. And each one has their own way. And um, it is true that uh, many teachers prefer to define the rules because they think, rightfully so, that for some, most of the students, since it's asymmetrical, they need to be filled up in the dots and the, the boxes. And so you basically take out what they misunderstood if they did and you pour in what you think it's supposed to be known, rightfully. This way they become, uh, if not your scholars, they become perhaps your clones. But hopefully they will at some point start thinking out of the box themselves because of other uh, influences about the same um, artwork and philosophically thinking about it and saying I'll associate it to these paintings and to these writings and to these books which I didn't know about before, just liked it for what it was, but now that I know I like it more because it means this, this and that philosophically to me and then I'm going to transmit what it means to me even through my playing if I played. But um, Inevitably, I think the teacher's uh, influence ends with the room where he or she teaches because when the student leaves, they filter whatever they keep. It's almost like harvesting and then the production comes later. And um, I don't think that you format students to become, even if you want to bring them in certain uh, organizational discipline, because if not, if you allow them to like it anyway and play it anyway, and you tell them it's uh, the tolerance is to accept the difference, I agree in that. I really believe in that. But it takes first a little bit more of um, uh, structural um, education, like for everything through discipline. What's right from wrong and what's respectful, what's disrespectful, and what is tolerated and what's not. And how to respect yourself, to respect the others, to respect the freedom, to respect the understanding, to etc., etc. Et and so if it's reduced to um, a dictatorship when you arrive to study music and you're taught this way and you're wrong because you're a student and I'm right because I'm the teacher and all the other teachers are wrong because I know better than them, it's implied often, uh, but not always told so. And regardless, uh, the fact is that the students are free to go elsewhere, and they do. And nowadays, more than in my generation or generations before mine, because on the computer they can go on anything and reach anything about anything. Of course, if it's only the 
visible part of the iceberg of all those intellectual endeavors of others. But they can at least have access to it and say, oh, that's how people think of my piece. Oh, that's how people wrote about my piece. Oh, that's how people um, wrote dissertations about my piece. I disagree. They don't know what it is. I know better. It means to me this. This is the style. How can this and that and this? But when you play for music, music for people who don't know the music, they usually... Um, it's not seduction, really. I think it's um, converging points um, that make them understand that while it's fiction, it has something of humanity of all of us in it. Of course, it's not documentary. Like, if I play my music, I'm the composer. It's like I'm the producer of my tomatoes and I come to sell them. But no, if it goes through a middleman, then the performer, the translator, the interpreter becomes the piece. And especially if the composer is dead, then the teacher becomes some kind of a lawyer on behalf of the composer's estate with a student who's supposed to understand what it meant. Because, in fact, the notation, no matter how detailed, doesn't translate the writing ideas of the composer. Because, in a way, you look at the score and it doesn't sound at all like when you hear it. It sounds improvised and messy, and when it's written, it appears to be organized and very structured. And so there is a dichotomy between um, the intent, the notation, the interpretation, the understanding, the transmission of it all, and the, uh, the only truth compared to the multiple ways of understanding it, and perhaps liking it, as I said, I think, in the beginning, for the wrong reasons. But it's better to like it for the wrong reasons than to pass next to it without to notice it, because it enriches you in your life, regardless if you become or not the musician that you wished if you wanted to, regardless if you are not caring about classical music because your interests in life are to do with science or with uh, uh, social uh, things, or you just, you know, perhaps you're building houses. I mean, whatever you do in life, you do it to do something well and hope a retribution to make um, a living for yourself and uh, people who you're um, connected to. So inevitably, uh, this is a necessity. How to make meaningful necessity of something that appears to be unmeaningful. But in fact, it is very meaningful. And I find that very important to share because very often I think that um, people who don't know consider that the one person who knows knows it all. And people who are very knowledgeable already about it will consider that anybody who plays or tells them the piece is obviously wrong because it's not them. It's because they already know the piece. They've read the book before they went to the movie. They know about the opera before they heard it. And so um, that's not the same as if they go and you want to be just told the story, just like a child liking to be told the story to go to sleep. Because what it happens is that it triggers their imagination, regardless of how you read it to them. Of course, it depends if you make it more artistically read or more boringly read, you can bring it to be more interesting to them. But the story itself by itself is interesting. The narration is more interesting than the, um, only the way it's told. But it, it matters, because if not, you can say, I'll play just the notes of the score and they'll like it, and if they don't, they're idiots. And I'm smart because I can read the music, and they can't. But if they could, then they won't need you. And in fact, you should be very humble and say, okay, this is what it means to me, and I'll share it with you. Now, if the whole 20 people know it and 100 people discover it, of which perhaps 90 will hate it because they prefer the pop music that they prefer to listen to, that's fine too. You cannot convince them all, and you shouldn't. And if you start studying and the teacher pours you a right from wrong, it's because they want to structure you in the beginning. But the beginning should lead to something where the curiosity of the younger person person who is studying about something will be interested. Would it be a video game? They will be more curious because they like it. If it's, um, um, you have to open, you have to ignite, you have to bring that flame and to tell them, hey, I'm older than you, but I also remain young when I discover it as if I discover it because it keeps on giving. And I want to share with you what it means to me. I think sometimes that is very more appealing and compelling 
to the students for a role model or even for non-music students than somebody who just says, you know, I'm this great scientist, I'm this great this, I'm a great doctor and this. And people say, wow, but they don't connect to it because it's at another distant um, planet uh, intellectually or emotionally from them. They want to associate something to which they can identify. Of course, playing an instrument at a young age creates already a sense of organization by the fact of organizing the, <coughs> the mnemotechnic knowledge of things. The industry of playing becomes more of a, like gymnastics rather than artistic expression. But artistic expression of the body is called gymnastics. It could be, lead you to uh, classical ballet. But you cannot do it without. No body, no classical ballet. So um, no ear, no hearing, uh, discerning e hearing of classical music, regardless if you play. Uh, because uh, if you read uh, books and you read and you learned a grammar, is in order to be discerning with your readings if <coughs> by yourself. Even if you have a teacher in the beginning and perhaps you go and... Uh, read uh, articles about it or hear people talk to you on um, on internet about it um, you still forge your own opinion and your own taste and you say oh I didn't like that then but now I like it more and oh when I was young I thought this was boring now I find it fascinating the format the length the shortness perhaps I like commercials perhaps I like uh, six hours TV shows or uh, in six episodes or perhaps I like a film of two hours uh, these things come after it's like an opera, or um, um, which sounds endless to most people because it's repetitive and um, you find that exaggeration of the emotion, of the expression is unnatural, they don't just speak. Um, but in a way, all representations of art forms are exaggerations of the thought. But the thoughts remain at the embryonic moment where you just imagine it and then all of a sudden if you find the right level of expression for it, format-wise, you reach the people right away. The simplicity touches them right away in the hall. The complexity uh, perhaps gives them to think, okay, well this fugue in music is very complex, I prefer that song because it talks to me right away. And it takes um, perhaps 70 times hearing if I have the desire, courage, and possibly curiosity to, to reach the point of, it, of, of um, enjoying something complex that didn't reveal itself naturally to me in the first place. And I'll say, oh, you only know, like, like fugues. I think songs are very stupid and simple. Then it creates an elite, an elitism, which then rejects as everybody talks to the, each other because they know what they talk about and they want to ignore the others. But the others have to come in. Of course, you have to vulgarize, simplify a little bit in the beginning to bring them in. But once they are in, they're hooked. And once they're hooked, they want to go through the complexities because it's more interesting. It's like taste. If they don't have developed uh, taste buds, how will they know what to appreciate? And once they start being able to differentiate, it's like, hearing, you start hearing things that you didn't hear before because you can hear more discerningly, you have taste more discerningly, you can uh, eat more discerningly, you can uh, choose your friends more discerningly. Everything then operates in rejection. I like, I don't, I hate, I love, I uh, might have liked that but now I think no more or perhaps one day I might like this because I'm not ready for it. That we don't know so much to say because it's the path of life. <coughs> we never stay the same. We evolve about who is around us and where we go and how we are influenced and sometimes <coughs> It, is, it takes time to, um, to, to, to understand that it's a dead end where we are brought in for certain things. Like, I didn't think I liked Impressionist paintings. I like only figurative painting. You know, I prefer to be only watching um, paintings without figurative uh, facts in it. I mean, uh, style. It's same thing in music. There's no music. It's the many pieces of music, works of music, thoughts of music, feelings of music, sometimes associated to a 
to, 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 to syllables, therefore to words, therefore to a language which in a way um, uh, is less universal but reaches its point because it talks to my language. If I sing a very beautiful song in Mongolian and I don't sing Mongolian, I wouldn't know if it's a curse or a, or, or a tender word. How would I know? But the sound of it sounds very appealing and I start hearing the music like that also when it's not connected to, to lyrics and I, we call them songs when they're pieces but pieces means thoughts as well as feelings combined with imagination within a, of course, textured, contextually textured um, knowledge. That's what education is about, and we do it in general education or impose it for science and language, but we don't do it for music. It remains either the entertainment, either the mass industrial production for background music, for different other activities that we do or which are already associated to them through uh, films and all. Um, but by itself, it becomes art for musicians, you know, like mathematics is for mathematicians and the grammar is for writers, but not all the people who study grammar become writers or are destined to become, but they could. And not all performers improvise, but they should, because they should feel thinking outside of the box as well as being respectful of the box uh, inside the notes. So I think it's all about educating to, um, as a teacher, responsibly to be free thinker and respectful, um, curious and uh, disciplined, not or, and um, um, ignite that um, curiosity that will lead to um, develop your own ecosystem of it. And you say, oh, that's what it means to me. And then if you become famous in your uh, field, you'll say, that's what it becomes that what is it, what it is, sorry. And that's why I think it's a problem. Because then others will come and say, I beg to differ to me, okay, but for that, but in other ways, I think, um, it's not right or wrong. Schumann is not uh, more right than Mozart, and Mozart is not less wrong than Bach. Uh, it's not like science where you can prove wrong a theorem uh, by somebody else. It's just like you add your own sensitivity, your own sensibility, your own intellect to an ever-going um, uh, necessity of um, art form to express themselves through sounds as you can do it through um, sculpture, or through um, painting, or through um, writing, or through video, or any... Regardless what you use is what you want to express. Something is bu budding in you. And this creativity is often stifled very early because we are told you're not supposed to think, you're not supposed to dream, you're not supposed to understand, you're not supposed to like this, this is for those, this is for that, this is for you, and just listen to it because that's your music and you're not supposed to understand more difficult things, regardless if they're good or not, but it's not difficult. It's just that it's not immediately comestible. And so uh, the, the role of the performer and the role of the teacher are not the same because you already preach the convert when you're teaching somebody who comes for a lesson because they want to. But if you teach uh, in a way the people who don't know what to expect, if the, they are in presence of your performance, regardless if they came for it for their good or wrong reasons or because it was broadcasted somewhere, somehow they connect to this piece of art which represents part of the universe of humanity's um, uh, production. It could be a theater play, could be a book, could be a, a work of music, and you can say, ah, it's not for me, I don't understand it, I'm not meant for that, and you put yourself out. So, of course, not everybody can ex expect or should be expected to embrace every form of every art and and become a, a passionate for all because inevitably they will be skewed either by their education or background or as I said general industrial culture that is produced in mass 
um, for the masses. Uh, I think it takes a few people to change the um, the trends, and then all of a sudden, a few decades later, people say, "Oh, this was it was," you know. The, for some people who like entertaining music, the Beatles did that in the 60s. And then for other people, let's say the Rolling Stones did it for them. And then for a classical musician who thinks about music of, I don't know, 12th century or 17th century, all of a sudden to them, these two groups are alike. But for people who really like those music of the Rolling Stones, they'll say that there is an ocean of difference between the two, regardless if they use the same type of triads and chords. And if you take two, the harmonic progression is simplified compared to a Bach fugue. That's why Bach fugue is not popular. But perhaps it's popular because um, um, it is also enforced. So you get into these kind of situations where you, you, don't there, you, you cannot arrive there and say, I'm going to just impose on you my elite. But you bring them slowly to um, gradually to um, like it, and then because that, they would get hooked by curiosity, and then because they love, they will know. And they'll find a way. And it will enrich and open their perspectives. Because after all, what do we do for younger generations as parents, if we are, or as teachers for the other children than ours? What do we do is open their perspectives. And this can lead to everything. And not opening their perspectives can only lead to uh, intolerance in general, and not specifically for art, and um, judgmentalism and all that. And um, I think art is a good form to teach through its discipline, paradoxically, but really, the funneling towards tolerance. I find that a fascinating subject, and I never, never tire to share it. Thank you.